banquet? Too? Yes. Very, very good. Well, I enjoyed the movie yesterday. And I was still thinking over in my mind when that Marine drill sergeant demanded that the people stomp on the flag and Joe wouldn't do it. That was a test to see if he would stand. Just like that. Good. Well, yesterday was also Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. The day, once a year, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies of the temple, and he would sprinkle blood on the mercy seat, and that would forgive the Jews covered, not forgiven, covered for one year. Well, Christ is our day of atonement, and his day on the cross, we only have to do that once. And uh, thank you, Jesus. Now, Irene gave me this doctor's book. I, all of us have at this point in our lives, except the young ones, maybe are dealing with doctors. And here's a couple of stories. Shortly after the 911, 9-11 emergency number became available, an elderly and quite ill lady appeared in a hospital emergency room. Having driven herself to the hospital, she barely managed to stagger in from the parking lot. The horrified nurse rushed over to her with a wheelchair and said, why didn't you call 911 and get an ambulance? And the lady replied, my phone doesn't have an 11. <laughs> <laughs> this one's even better. How many have been hospitalized for a length of time? Anybody? It's horrible. I had three weeks in downtown Baylor. Woo! Tough. But one of the things you deal with when you're in there for a long time is boredom, really. So Lynn was in the hospital recovering from major surgery. She hated being stuck in the tiny little room all day. And to make matters worse, the daily routine was starting to get to her. Every morning, for example, the nurse would bring her breakfast, which invariably consisted of an egg, a piece of toast, and a glass of apple juice. I also had a nurse come every day at 4 a.m. to draw blood. I mean, it's just a blast. <laughs> <laughs> The nurse would then return a little bit later to empty the urine bottle. The same routine had been going on for days and days. Finally, one morning, Lynn decided to have a little fun. She ate the eggs and toast, but went to the bathroom where she cleaned out the urine bottle and poured in the apple juice. When the, when the nurse returned later that morning, he took a look at the bottle and a frown came over his face. Obviously you enjoyed your breakfast, but something's wrong. This urine looks a little cloudy, he said, pointing to the bottle. Mm. Oh really, she replied, picking up the bottle in question. <laughs> Putting it to her lips, she said, in that case, we better run it through again. <laughs> I tell you, Irene, there's a bunch of them in here. It's terrific. <laughs> well, if you take your outline, we're going to finish the book of Romans today. It's been an exciting trip through the book. I have noticed that there's a lot more interest in looking at it on the YouTube channel for some reason. But uh, Romans is kind of the dictionary, the path to salvation. Paul does an outstanding job, or actually he dictates this book. We'll find out who really wrote it today. But what we learned last week, the Apostle Paul is proof that God's not done with the Jewish people. The Lord has preserved the remnant of his chosen people who will choose to follow Christ in faith. Messianic Christians like Donna and Irene. Paul was a Jew from the tribe of Benjamin, and many more will receive their Messiah as well. 
There is only one body of Christ, but a lot of different gifts and talents. God has obviously blessed Tiffany with the talent to sing. She is terrific. If I was married to her, I'd make her sing me to sleep at night. <laughs> Christians should always submit to the government but also be very active in choosing that government. Too many Christians just stay home if evangelicals all vote. And I heard some very encouraging news. Um, they have more Republican registrations in the toss-up states than we've ever had in the history. Uh, Charlie Kirk ought to get an MVP if you know who he is. He is, <laughs> he is on the campuses, and he is facing opposition down and getting students to register. And then Daniel says God ultimately raises up kings and takes them down. We should pray for our current leaders and pray for our future leaders. And we need to obey. But Gary Kinder always said, if the government makes a law or rule that God says is wrong, where to obey God? Where? And then praying for the nation. Great state of Tennessee. Lived in Nashville twice. Great state. And the scripture. We're going to go into the book of Corinthians next week. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you, that you were enriched in everything by him, in all speech, in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. And we'll get into that next week. Where we are, Paul's written this letter to the Roman Jews and Gentiles. He is in Corinth when he writes this letter. But he wants to come there. He's just going to come a different way. God's plans are a lot different than ours. He wanted to have a nice trip there. And of course he got there in chains. So the first chapter we're going to do, 14 through 16, the law of liberty of freedom. Now he says, receive one who is weak in the faith. What that means is accept new believers. When he says they're weak, he means they're weak in their knowledge and their faith. But not to dispute over doubtful things, peripheral, unimportant things. You know, a lot of denominations kind of try to dissect the Bible and hone in on a couple of things, and then they're not the most important things. The most important thing is your relationship personally with Christ. For one who believes he can need everything he wants, those are probably the Gentiles, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Well, that's why they're weak. They're only eating vegetables. Now, what he's saying is don't have divisions just because of dietary habits. Let not him who eats despise him who does not eat. And let not him who does not judge. And I think I need a battery again. Thank you. <clears throat> For God has received them. Who are you to judge one of God's servants? To his own master he stands or fails. Indeed, he was made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day above another. He's talking about the day of worship. The Jews wanted to have the Sabbath on Saturday. And then the Christians wanted to celebrate the first day of the week. And another, hey, every day is alike. Who cares if it's Saturday or Sunday, you worship the God anytime you want. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it to the Lord. 
And he who does not observe that day to the Lord does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord, he gives God thanks. And he who doesn't eat, now I can assume that pork chops became a big issue back then. But they were not to judge each other over it, for none of us lives to himself. You don't die to yourself, you're going to be the Lord for eternity. So you live today for the Lord, you live tomorrow, you live forever. For to this end, Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But why do you judge each other? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we're all going to have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, this is Isaiah 45, verse 23. As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess me. Every knee, every tongue, whether you believe in Christ or not, you're going to stand before him, and you're going to have to give an account. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather resolve this. Never put a stumbling block or cause a brother to fall. Now what does that mean? Well, in our today's society, if you're out with someone who has an obvious problem with alcohol, should you order a drink in front of them? No. It's not good. Don't be a stumbling block. person has a problem with other issues, don't ever become a way for that person to easier take care of those. Now, there's going to be two different judgments at the end time. Believers are going to participate in the Bema judgment. The Bema judgment, Paul likens it to the Olympics. Some people are going to get medals. Some are not. But that's the reward to the believers. Non-believers are going to participate in what's called the White Throne Judgment. And I'm going to cover three scriptures here that uh, aren't in your outline. But the first is Jesus talking in John 5, 22 to 24. And he says, For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son. Christ came as the Lamb of God. He is also going to be the judge of God. <laughs> that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honors not the Son, honors not the Father which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that hears my word, and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death to life and then 2 Corinthians 5.10 2 Corinthians 5.10 says for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. And then finally, Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 to 15. And this is the Apostle John writing this. The reason they call it Revelation is because it's the revelation from Christ to John about the future. And he says in Revelation 20, 11 to 15, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. 
And I saw the dead, both small and important, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire or eternal hell. So pray your way in to the book of life. Now there's two different theological takes on it. Some believe that when we're born, we're in the book of life. And as we live, our name either stays or is removed. The other theologians think that when you receive Christ, you go into the book of life. How does that handle the Old Testament? So, God's the judge. I'm not. All I know is I'm betting on Christ as my Savior. And then, page four, the law of love. I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus that Nothing's unclean of itself, but to him who considers it unclean, it is unclean. Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, it's interesting how he talks about food all the time. Well, these folks all met in homes and ate together. So you can see there wasn't any church buildings or restaurants. They're in the homes. And don't destroy with your food the one for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable by God and also approved of by men. Let us therefore pursue the things that make for peace and the things by which one may edify, encourage each other. Some people like to tear down other people. I hate that. I liked it in Don Rickles, though. He was pretty funny. But uh, we shouldn't do that to people we know. And all things are pure, but it is evil for the man's who eats with offense. It's good that neither eat meat or drink wine or do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. What do you approve of? Okay, that's what he's talking about. But he who doubts is condemned. If he eats because he does not eat from faith, whatever is not from faith is sin. And chapter 15, bearing others' burdens. When we who are strong in faith ought to bear the scruples of those that are new and weak in faith and not to make ourselves look good, let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. For even Christ did not please himself. But as it is written, and again, Paul is an encyclopedia, this is Psalm 69.9. And it, as it is written, for even Christ did not please himself. But the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. Christ took the punishment for all of us. All of us who have faith. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. 
Just think, we have the scripture who said are thousands of years old. Just think of that. How precious it is to have that available to us. Now may the God of patience and comfort, I love his benedictions. He does them best. May the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded one toward another, according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in unison. Hallelujah, Sidney. Glorify God together. Therefore, receive one another, just as Christ received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the Jew for the truth of God. He came to the Jew first to confirm the promises made to the Father. Abraham was promised that God would make of him a great nation. And I say he confirms the promises that the Gentiles might glorify God in his mercy. As it is written, Psalm 18, 49, and says, For this reason I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, laud him, all you peoples. King David was way ahead of his time. He is, he, when the Jews hated the Gentiles, non-Jews, he was preaching that he's going to reach all of them back in the Old Testament. And then, page five here, uh, and again he's quoting Isaiah, he likes Isaiah, I do too. And again Isaiah, in chapter 11, verse 10, now this is a key prophecy. There shall be a root of Jesse. Now who was Jesse? Jesse was King David's father, okay? Isaiah's prophesying that a descendant of Jesse through David, and he shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, and in him the Gentile, me, shall hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then Paul's going to talk about himself a little bit here. From Jerusalem to Lyricum. Now where is Lyricum? We know where Jerusalem is. Lyricum's in Macedonia. 1,400 miles from Jerusalem. So Paul's saying, I've preached for 1,400 miles this message. Now I myself am confident concerning you, my brother, that you are also full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able to admonish one another. He's saying, you guys are pretty mature there in Rome. Nevertheless, brother, I have written more boldly to you on some points, as reminding you, because the grace given to me by God, that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I have reason to glory in Christ Jesus in the things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me. I'm not going to talk about what may happen, what I might do, in word and deed, to make the Gentiles obedient. I've been able to do mighty wonders. Paul raised people from the dead. He healed the sick. He brought them through storms. Signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about to 
Lyricum, I guess that's how you say it. It's in Macedonia, just so you know, which is Albania and Yugoslavia today. Little history lesson. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. And so I have made it my aim to preach the gospel, not where Christ was preached before. I'm going to new territory. I'm going to be a pioneer for Christ. And again, he quotes Isaiah 52, 15. But as it is written, okay, he doesn't want to work on somebody else's success. He wants to do it on his own. But as it is written, to whom he was not announced, they shall see. And those that have not heard shall understand. Talking about Gentile believers like us. And then plans to visit Rome. For this reason, the reason is to preach to the Gentile. I have also been much hindered from coming to you. But now, no longer, after three years in Corinth, and having a great desire these many years to come, I want to come to Rome. Whenever I go to Spain, he was planning on going to Spain, I shall come to you, for I hope to see you on my journey and to be helped on my way there by you. If first I may enjoy your company for a while, but I got to go to Jerusalem. Remember, Paul had a huge offering to bring back to the church in Jerusalem, which was under tremendous persecution. So he's going to go back, and that's when he gets arrested. But I am going to Jerusalem to minister to the saints, for it pleased those from Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor among the saints who are in Jerusalem. So Paul is going to bring that money back to Jerusalem, it pleased them indeed, and they are their debtors. For if the Gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things, enjoying what the Jews pioneered with the scriptures, with the Messiah, the prophets, it pleased them indeed for their debtors. For if the Gentiles have been partakers of the Jews' spiritual things, then their duty is also to minister to them in material things. Therefore, when I have performed this and am able to minister to them, I'll go by way of you, by way of Spain. For I know that when I come to you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. And he's going to Ask for prayer. Prayer is so important. When Gary Kinder started this ministry, he said it's going to be a praying ministry. And it's going to be an unusual Bible study. We're going to study the Bible. Straight through. Love, Gary. This one. Now I beg you, brother, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit, please strive together with me in prayers for myself, that I may be delivered from those in Judea, the Jews that hate Paul, who do not believe, and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints. <coughs> that I may come to you with joy in the will of God, and let's get refreshed together. That's why I like meeting like this. We get refreshed together. We encourage each other. And Staying home in your pajamas isn't the same. I don't care what TV program you watch. It's not the same. Now, he's going to start mentioning names. A lot of names. You see any good names for your grandkids in here? Uh, some of you may like. I'm just going to cover a few of them. He said, greet Priscilla and Aquila. We met them during the book of Acts. Their husband and wife. Jewish family, Messianic Jews, fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risk their own necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church 
that's in their house. They got a house in Rome. They're holding church services. Aquila and Priscilla. And there is a whole bunch of other ones. I don't know. Let's see how my pronunciation is here. Greet my beloved Empedetus, who is the first fruit of Achaia to Christ. He's the first guy that became a Christian in Achaia. Greet Mary. A lot of women mentioned here that labored for us. Um, Andronicus. That would go good with my last name, Andronicus Skell. Yeah. It would be pretty good at actually. And Junia, my country bitten, Amplius, my beloved Urbanus, Statius, Apellus. You don't meet these people. Aristopolis, Herodian, and the household of Narcissus. And where is this name? Yeah, that's pretty good. Triposa, that nah, not crazy about that one. Persis, Rufus, what my good friend named his dog Rufus. Uh, has some Critus, Phlegon, Hernus, Petrobus, Hermes, and the brethren who are with them. You can tell by the names there's a lot of Greeks in here. Pelogus, Julia, Nerus, and Olympus. And all the saints are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. That's, of course, how Judas betrayed Jesus, giving the holy kiss, the kiss of death, unfortunately. And then avoid divisive person. You know, there's just some people like stir things up. Avoid them. Now I urge you, brother, pay attention. Note who causes division and offenses contrary to our doctrine, which you learn, and avoid them. You know, God wants us to love people, but we don't have to move in with them. You have to respect them, but you don't have to hang around with them. You know, negative people bring negative results, and it's contagious. We used to, in the health club business, we used to call people like that, Snaya, subject to the negative influence of other people. <laughs> I'd have a code name for that. For those who are such, don't serve the Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and smooth words, and flattering speech to deceive the hearts of the simple. It sounds like this election. For your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I'm glad on your behalf. But I want you to be wise about what is good and simple concerning evil. Avoid it. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. I remember Gary used to talk about all the traveling. He traveled the whole world, did seminars in Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia. And he said sometimes you'd check into a hotel room and you could feel evil. And what he would do is he'd yell at the top of his lungs, Get out of here, Satan! That <laughs> was great. <laughs> I didn't mean to scare you. Uh, and then greetings from Paul's friends. These are Paul's closest buddies. Timothy, the great Timothy, my fellow worker, and Lucius, Jason, Susipater, my countrymen, greet you. I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, Paul dictated it all to him. He wrote it down, sent it to Rome. Greet you in the Lord. Gaius, my host, and the host of the whole church greets you. Erastus, the treasurer of the city, who got bored again, greets you. And Quartus, a brother, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And then his final benediction for the book of Romans. It's one of the greatest. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel, 
and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Knowledge that has just been revealed, kept secret since the world began, but now made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all the nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith. For God alone be wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Great book of Romans. And then what we learn. Well, Jim Kyle's not here. Sydney, what did you learn today? Um, just different things. So, what I learned today is about Jesus Christ and about Romans 8 and also that Paul has a lot of friends. <laughs> That's good. Nice to have friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Have a good day. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's good. I'll do that with my uh, bill collector. <laughs> what we learn, two different judgments will take place when standing before the Lord. The beam of judgment determines what rewards a believer is going to have. There's going to be degrees of heaven. And I also believe there's degrees of hell. You know, this is a great big universe. We can't even comprehend the size of it. But we're going to have jobs in the future. It's not going to be playing the harp on the clouds. You will have a role in the kingdom. What that role is kind of depends on what you do here. The white throne judges all unsaved individuals. And how now God is a righteous judge. He will judge non-believers based on on the law. If you have ever told a lie, if you've lost it after a while, if you've taken the Lord's name in vain, you've broken all the law, you need to have a Savior. And then salvation coming to the Gentile world was prophesied with the Deliverer coming out of Zion. Paul instructs both the Jews, he is writing in the Gentiles, to love one another and not fight over differences. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt so welcome when I married Donna and met her family, uh, all Jewish family, wonderful people, accepted me. You know, the goyim that's coming in. <laughs> but I was her boss at work, so they treated me nice. But no, we, we got along great. And I'll never forget the first time I met her family. Um, they ordered Chinese food. And they said, what would you like? Well, I ordered sweet and sour pork. Oh. Okay, I'm, you know, I'm new at this. So the food comes, not one of them would eat it. Okay, so I ate the whole thing. Got sicker than sick. I had to check into a motel room for three days, which conveniently had the sink across from the commode. And I was so sick. Oh. And I was thinking, you know, what a dope. I shouldn't have worn it. <laughs> uh, so Paul wants to visit the disciples in Rome, but he first must go to Jerusalem, deliver the aid, and see the apostles. He'll go, but he'll go bound, as told in the book of Acts. So that's our lesson for today. Next week, we start Corinthians. Anybody have any questions? Yes. Hey. Um, are you going to be back for in How long? How, how long do you, like, how many, how many, next, uh, is it going to be next week when we do the, another Bible one? Yes. We will be here next Sunday which you are also welcome to come. You want to come back? Um, he likes them cookies. <laughs> 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 he likes the food anyway. Yeah. And the people, yeah. Jim?
two thoughts come to my mind as I read this. One is the language, the complexity of thought. You know, in, in Paul's writing, it's clear that to me that this represents a, a pinnacle accomplishment in, in, in human history in terms of philosophy. True. It's amazing. The other thing that occurs to me is that it's amazing that we have this. This was a letter, probably not many copies. You know, how did this handwritten, survive? handwritten on yeah. papyrus? <laughs> how did this survive so that we could read it today? I can only say it's God's sovereignty and gift. There is a gift. Because the Bible, I heard one old preacher say, "Bible, you know what that stands for." I said, what? He said, basis, basic instructions before leaving earth. <laughs> Pretty good. Let's well, Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we're so grateful that you have preserved your word. And we thank you for the Apostle Paul and how the transition from a killing Christian intense person to one of the greatest Christians of all time, thank you for his life. And Lord Jesus, like in the movie we saw yesterday, you use people that are typically not who you would expect. And Father, may we always be available when you ask us to do something. When that still, still small voice comes in our ear and says, do this, go that way, talk to this person, help this person. It's uh it's a gift from you. I thank you for everybody here. Bless them. Hear these prayer requests, Father. And thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. Shedding that blood as punishment for my sin. And I thank you for an eternity in Christ's name. Amen. 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 We'll see you next week. Cowboys at 3.30. Amen.